your true life original life that the life you are living now is not your original life the life is a, a fragmented life a life that has been collided with um, um, the powers of this world and then the world the life had been corrupted already and that is why the bible said the earth became known and void your life became known and void so the service ended by him telling us that you can you can you can travel into the spirit into the into 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 time and reverse back that which had been fragmented you can travel and the the vehicle to travel is a uh, is prayer and that was where the first service ended in this second service i'm going to take you a little bit farther than that in fact i'm going to be opening your understanding and i'm praying to god that the holy spirit will help me i want to be as calm as i want to sometimes when i preach and i'm so shouting me i don't want to shout i want to really be calm i really want to be calm so that i can communicate a reality to you this morning i am i was i was excited because i know that somebody's story will change forever amen. i'm not hearing an amen. amen and what i'm saying is it's not a it's not a consolation i'm not saying this to make you happy or make you excited or as an encouragement it's a reality that I know that someone in today's service, when you live here, you will go announce to everybody in your family. You will even announce to your, your the enemy, your enemy, the enemy, that you found something that your life can never remain the same. The concept of Adulam is we are going to be teaching it in series because we cannot exalt it's a university of its own where it has so many course department and all that but we will just try and we will make progression we'll be progressing as god help us on wednesday on tuesday we'll progress but whatever we stop today we will i know that you will have a definite encounter you see the concept of adulam in fact, the first place in the scripture where Adulam was actually mentioned is in Genesis 38, 38 verse, verse 1. In Genesis chapter 38 verse 1, that was the first, you know, for the Bible student, you always, you always talk about um, the, um, the law of the first mention. The first place a scripture is mentioned in the Bible speaks a lot about the formation, the understanding or the original index and the context of what God was talking about. It was in Genesis chapter 38 and in verse 1. And the Bible began to talk. That was the first place a, a concept of Adulam appeared. The word itself, Adulam. Then the Bible says, and it came to pass that at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite whose name was Aram. Mm. that Judah came to a place and the place became a refuge, a hiding place. Give me verse 1. That had Judah, the, so the first mention of Adulam, the word Adulamite was that a man by name Judah got to a place and he was hidden they hide him in that place called adulam adulam has many things and many meaning many explanations and there are several dimensions or several dimensions of what adulam mean but in my own studies i've been able to break it down to seven by my own bible study what seven things Adulam mean and out of that I will list the seven things then I will pick one out of that seven to, to, to talk to you about Adulam that we are going to talk about the first thing I want to talk about Adulam is a place of encounter please write it down Adulam is a place of encounter number two Adulam is a place of transformation number three Adulam is a place of making where men are made 
Number four, am I rushing? I'm, I'm very, very slow, but I don't have one problem with time. That's the only issue here. I'll take it slow, but it's better, right? You understand. I have a problem with time, but let me just rush it. Then I will pick the path I want to really hit where giant are raised. I said, number one is a place of what? Number two is a place of what? Are you writing? Are you sure you are writing? Number three is a place of what? Make it. Number four, Adulam is a place of training. Number five, Adulam is a place of preparation. Someone say preparation. <clears throat> Number six, Adulam is a place of preservation. And number seven, Adulam is a place of process. Is a place of process. Seven things. And each of those seven has different meaning. But for the purpose of this service and where, where I want to talk about, I'll be picking the most important, which is if you lack the understanding of this, you will lack total understanding of what Adulam is all about. Adulam, a place of process. Somebody say process. Somebody say process. This is where most of us we think that God is not happy. This is where most of us think that our life is frustrated and many of us commit suicide. This is where most of us think like as if the enemy is chasing you while us no, God is processing you. I will explain to you as we move on. Now, after that place, there were two other places in scriptures before Adulam was talked about. But the next place I want to talk about is in 1 Samuel in chapter 22. 1 Samuel chapter 22, then the Bible start talking there and the first thing the Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 22 was when the Bible began to mention in verse 22. The Bible says in verse 22 verse 1, David therefore departed ends and escaped to the cave. Somebody said the cave. He didn't say a cave. He said D. When somebody, when the Bible mentioned D, the Bible is definite about the place. For instance, if we say a cave, you can say you get to a place and there are um, there, there is a there is a place. But when the Bible said D, the Bible is trying to describe something that is 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 beyond just um, a physical thing, a physical place. The Bible is trying to dis. Am I shouting? I've started shouting. Holy Spirit, bring me back. The place, someone said the place. The place, the Adlam, the cave. And the next thing the Bible says, and when his brothers and his father's heart had it, they went down to it to meet him. So David escaped in verse 22. But before David escaped in verse 19 and in verse 20 of that scripture, we I want you to give back to of where Saul started chasing David. Saul chased David to the point that he wanted to kill David. And then David ran. The first place David ran to was he ran to the land of the Philistine. When he got to the Philistine to seek an abode, he wanted to get to a place where he felt that these people, Philistine, would be able to assist him. But unfortunately, those he thought would stand as a refuge, as a coverage, actually were the one who wanted to kill him. Have you come to a point in time where you think that you are people that can stand by you, that can be with you, they can keep you? You run to a place for shelter, rather they are the ones that hand you over to the enemy. Have you come to a point in your life where you suddenly think that there's somebody in your life that you can, you can depend upon and the person turned you over to the enemy? David was in that situation where he ran to the Philistine, but the Philistine actually sought to kill him until he ran out of the Philistine. And then in verse 22, he ran to a place in verse 22 where the Bible says he got to the place and the Bible says that he departed and escaped to the cave Adulam. He got to Adulam and five set of people came to meet me. Follow me five set of people the first set that came to meet david where the bible described them the bible said number one is brethren somebody says his brethren number two is father's house number three and the verse two the first in verse two now first verse two 
and everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them and there were with him 400 men now I, I tried to read this scripture from another translation now another translation message translation message translation I want to give you message translation of that scripture of the kind of people that came to David are you following me everyone that was in distress every give me message if you have the message translation let's see what the message translation says everyone that was in debt everyone that was the Bible called them two men who were misfits men who were miscreants do you have a message Bible is that a message Bible men who were miscreants area boys area girls non-entity you know misfits you know miscreants you know what they say this guy's a miscreant who did they call them a miscreant is a non-entity a tout a tout all those misfits or tout and, and all that and they came five of them this category came to this man called David in that cave number one David was not the one that called them they came to him they heard about him and they came to him they came to him in that place in that cave called Adolam five category of men that came to David have you noticed in that scripture none of them had the name nobody knew anything about them all the Bible described was his brethren all the Bible described was um, his father's house the Bible said men who were discontented men, none of them had the name nobody knows any one of them they had no name they had no identity they were nobody they were irrelevant to the point that the Bible could not could the Bible actually has people who were beggars and the Bible described uh, blind Bartimaeus who was a beggar but the Bartimaeus still has a name there were people who the Bible could record their names but this man their name was not recorded you know why they were complete they were you think you were frustrated this man were more frustrated than you 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 still have a name they gave you a name Baba Mama and um, Pastor this uh, Moses this man didn't have a name you know why even when they gave birth to them their father their family had no record of their names because they were complete nobody a write-off life wrote them off destiny wrote them off everything about that life wrote them off and the bible described them and said there are 400 how can 400 men gather and yet none of their name could be called 400 men 400 men impossible women were there yet the bible could not even pick one of them and say oh this man's name is this because at, at that time this man their life was a life that was battered and battered by life are you here this morning and you think that life has beaten you hard you think everything about your life is over some of us even think like killing yourself and coming to you've not come to this man who came to david if you see what they experienced if you see how they are, you went to school they never went to school you you had a family they didn't have a family you you were accepted at least one person accepted these guys were not accepted you you were at least you still finish primary school or secondary school and your father this one didn't go anything you you still have a place you can sleep this man didn't have home they were roaming about and you come on and say my life is hopeless your life you don't know what hopeless is if you know what hopeless is consider the men that came to this david they, they were roaming about the bible described them as miss do, is that message bible please read what the bible called their names so that you will know if you know your verse two give me verse two so David got away and came to the cave Adola, mm -hmm. where his brothers and other associates with Verse his family. Two. Not only, but all who were down on their luck came around losers. Losers! Are you a loser? No, 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 no. If you are a loser here, lift your hands up. Let me see. Let me know so that I can put you. Who is a loser here? You are not a loser. Okay, go ahead. And vagrants. They are what? Vagrants. Vagrants. Who is English people? What do they call vagrant? Who is a vagrant? Where? Eh? Mr. Blessing, what's a vagrant? Who did they call? Where are the grammarian here? Vagrant. Eh? Bastard. Vagrant is a bastard. Eh? Bastard. That's the meaning of bastard. Kai. Vagabond. Vagabond. Pastor, this means a vagabond. Who is a vagabond here? So you see that your case is not to get there. Number three. Uh, eh? Wanderer. So, so that means someone know our future. He doesn't have ambition. He doesn't have house. He doesn't have friend. He, who want to be a friend of a vagabond here? Who 
want to be a friend of a bastard? Who want to be a friend? Nobody. This was the man who came to David. Mm -hmm. And misfits of all sorts. Misfits. When you say somebody is a misfit, what of all sorts? A misfit. What does it mean? Eh? That means this guy no useful. He doesn't use to heaven. It's not useful. Eh? It will complicate. That means if you have them in the choir, they will. If you are singing do, they will be singing re. If you are singing fa, they will be singing so. That means it's a misfit. Why you do you know that is the highest insult you can call someone? When you look at someone and say you are misfit of all sorts, go and kill yourself. Commit, put stone on your head and drown inside the water. It's a misfit. This with the man that came to David. They were the men that came to David. Ah, they came to David. And when they came to David, the boy said, David, he never rejected them. And he became the captain of this man. Now, the question is, this man that came to David, what, what made them come to David? The Bible says they had. Someone said they had. They had. Do you know there's a way that you can hear that God is moving in a place and you can decide to go and join it. Many of us will hear about the move of God, but yet we just ignore ourselves. You hear that, oh, this particular person is, is about to rise and you just, uh, you just throw them away. This misfit, this miskind, these people who are vagabond, they heard that God is about to lift up a man. They heard that God is about to change a man's story. They heard that, no, no, I believe this guy. If this guy can be in this cave, there's something. He, they heard about a move and they decide to join. There are three types of people on earth. Those that hear about what God is doing and they follow. Those that hear and refuse to follow. And those that don't even hear at all. They don't even hear what God is doing. But this man had. The Bible said they had and they came. They had they came they had and they came they had and they came and after they had and came to to david the bible said he became the king and the ruler over them he became the king and the ruler over them now adulam is a place also where three things will emerge from that place number one is a place where kings are made is a place where priests are made and it's a place where giant killers are made. We're going to be looking at that third one because we're going to look at the king and the priest later. It's a place where giant slayers are made. So these guys who came to David in Adulam, they came to meet him in that cave. Something happened. Why they were there? They know that Adulam is a place of encounter. Two, it's a place of what? Look into your Bible, things I told you about. Transformation. Three, it's a place of what? Making. Number four, a place of what? Training number five is a place of what? Preparation is a place of what? Preservation is a place of what? Process. Now, this man came, they were misfits, they were miscreants, they were in debt, and they came to Adulam to submit themselves for the processing of making. They came to Adulam so that their life can be processed. You see, there's no way God will ever use a man that is not processed. There's no way God will ever transform a man that he has not prepared, he has not made. There's no way God can ever commit anything of eternal into the life of a man he had not worked on. Every general that you see, any man you see, either in ministry or in any sphere of life or in any area of life, music, industry, finances, one thing is that there are men that have been processed. You, will not, you may not be there when God was processing them. We only come to celebrate the glory of men, but you don't see their story. You come to celebrate their destiny, but you don't see the scar behind it. But this man came to David and they said, we know that there's a God that made you. We know that there's an encounter, David, that you had. There is something that is inside of you that gave you the capacity to pull down a man called Goliath. David, we have heard about your exploit. Our only you single-handedly defeated the Philistines. David, David, we know that there's something inside of you, and we have just come to and we have come to also connect to the same process that made you. So they submitted themselves to the processes of making. Adulam, the place where giants were raised. This man submitted themselves for processing. Someone say processing. Most of us in life, 
we want to we want to celebrate the end product but we don't want to celebrate the processes of the making we want to celebrate greatness we want to celebrate great glory you want to celebrate great life you want to get a great ministry great businesses a great musician a great person a great woman a great man you want to celebrate the end product but you are not willing to endure the processing of the making now listen the most difficult aspect of life is the processes of making many of us will we will fight against processing you will rebel against it when god is making you and god is preparing you for what he wants to prepare you for you will rebel you will fight you will go against it you will even turn again sometimes some of you even block the person that god is using to process you but you don't know that there's a process that your life is going through god is processing a man some of you could be your life right now you in the state you are in the state where god is processing you he's preparing you for something great in life he's preparing you for something mighty he's preparing you for a destiny that will turn around nations he's preparing you to become a business powerful business mogul he's preparing you to become a powerful businesswoman he's preparing to become a powerful banker industry person ministry person god is preparing you to become a voice in this generation but you will not just assume that voice you will not just get there you know why there are four things i want to say about processing and how men these men were processed in adolam and we were going to see the end product of this man that didn't have the name when i started seeing the exploit at the time I, I i carried my ipad i came to the city room and i started crying oh like what happened i said there's something i'm seeing here that is shocking me and that is the area that interested me most process when god is making a man number one anything that will ever become mighty in life must take a process it takes time to achieve destiny it takes time to build life it takes time to raise giant killers it takes time to raise kingdom men it takes time to retain reign priests it takes time to build great ministries it takes time to build a great woman you want to be a great wife a great mother to your children it's going to take time and processes four or five things if there's time that God run you through when he's building you in Adulam. Number one, every time God passes your life through processes, number one, it helps, God helps you to test your loyalty to God and to men. It helps you test how loyal you are both to God and to man. Have you noticed that when you commit something to people's hands who were never processed, they become disloyal? you become disloyal to god the bible says god has to test the children of israel so that after they've not they've seen success they will not return back and then god begin to test them and begin to prepare them so that their loyalty to god and their loyalty to men can be confirmed i have noticed in life that men that never pass through process of ministry process of training process of development they are the ones who become disloyal I've seen pastors who just suddenly come to ministries and in less than two months, one month, yeah, they, they enter the altar, they become pastors. They are the ones who become lawyers because they didn't pass through process. God will pass through your process so as to see how loyal are you. Men will pick you through process so as to see how loyal are you. Some of you will go to a place and say, why do you people, you should be keeping me in choir. I want to manifest. You are the one that want to manifest in the sight of God. He's processing you. Because the manifestation is not the problem of God. To manifest is not God's problem. To bless you is not God's problem. If you can, by this this afternoon by 12 noon you can receive an alert on your phone of one billion on your phone but that's not the problem with god the problem is are you processed enough to be able to manage what he wants to put in your hand because there are some of you here when god bless you with money god himself will be chasing you god you have listen god give somebody 50 million and the money enter your phone pa! and the next thing is like god say adam where are thou then god will say bright where are thou? Because God will start looking for you everywhere. He cannot find you again. You know why? The blessing he gave you became your destruction. The money you put in your hand. Do you know that some of us here? I want to marry. I want to marry. Husband, husband, husband. God said, my, your husband is waiting for you. It's not husband is the problem. God, is, if I give you a husband, you will kill the man. You will kill yourself. You will even poison, poison everybody. Because you have not sought your anger issue. You have problem with anger. 
you can't control your emotions. You are the type that react every time. You are the type that shout and knock and do all kinds of things. Two minutes, go, 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 go. your hand is very fast to send it text messages. Your hand, the hand is very fast to just you know send it things to people. God said, no, 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 no. What I do in Adulam is I process men. Why? I test their loyalty. I test their patience. How patient are you? I want to be a pastor. Make me a general pastor. They said they will pour shit on you. They will pour this on you. They will pour paper on you. He said, don't worry God. Give me the power. You think power is a problem of God? For God to give men power is a problem? For God to give men anointing is a problem? For God to make you a celebrity and blow overnight? Blow overnight? I don't want to mention some celebrity who just got... got you, know, you know there are some celebrities now. Missing celebrities. They just blow everybody is insulting this guy because everybody look at this guy and say no it's like as if his brain is under his armpit god really because it's not processed for god to help you it is not a problem with god but can you can it test you are you loyal if you if money enter your hand now are you loyal so processing comes to test your loyalty test your patience lift up your hands and say father where have i not been loyal help me to be loyal sometimes with tithe and offering and all this is, all this is matters a lot the ordinary 10 percent you are eating your tithe and now goes uh, ordinary 10 you can't give how then will i give you 10 million how will i give you twenty thousand dollars you cannot manage it because you have not managed the flow number one number two processing process helps you to build patience someone say patience Isaiah chapter 43 in verse 2. Isaiah 43 verse 2. Pro process it help you to bring patience. You know why? When God is waiting, when you are processed by God, then this gold wants to manifest. And God said, No, be patient. Be patient. We live in a world where patience has no law. Patient and impatient. Blessing, blessing are full of curses. The one whose name is happiness is full of sorrow. The one whose name is sorry, I'm not mentioning your name here. I'm just trying to tell you that what impatience will do is that impatience will make you lose a lot of opportunity. And I've seen many people like that. They think the devil is their problem. No, sir. Devil is not in the equation. In fact, sometimes you are binding the devil and the devil say, I've not even come and you are binding me. If I now come, what will you do? I bind you. I bind you. I bind you. They say, ah, I'm right there. Why are you insulting me? You are ignoring me. You are, you are kissing me wrongly. Say, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. You are binding. If I'm not coming, what will happen? Impatience. Patience, God build patience with you. Ministry takes patience. Leadership takes patience. Marry take patience. Influence take patience. Success take patience. You know, there are times as a pastor, as a pastor, you have been in church from the old church where we'll sit down in church. Two, three, four members will come. There was a day I fasted dry. Seven days, seven nights. Fasting, and I, my neck was long. I said, This Sunday for crowd to come. I said, This Sunday when I come, church is going to explode. As I enter church, only me and three people inside church. And I was confused. I said, God, what is this now? Ah, you should have honored my fasting and prayer. Seven days dry. Seven days dry fasting in church. Seven days dry. And yet, three members. God said, I am teaching you patience. Learn to wait. All this, I'm living, I'm running, I'm broken up. You see, all of you here who has, you know, who came for breakfast meeting last week Sunday, if you actually patient, they will not be needing for breakfast. All this, I'm serving you breakfast. I'm sorry, it's lack of impatience that makes you to do that. Both the guy serving the lady breakfast and the lady serving the guy breakfast. Check majority of these break up, break up stories. It's lack of patience. You saw him, you saw a text message on his phone. I'm broken up. Do you how many text messages? You saw it, somebody call him at night. Somebody is calling him. Say, he's cheating on me. Who told you? And even if it is cheating, is that the end of life? Patience. Patience. So we say patience. Many of us will not know that is what God through this man when they were in Adulam. As they were in Adulam, God was building patience. God said, I'm building you to become a giant killer. Ah, I know you have no name, but I'll give you a name. I know you have no you have no power, I'll give you power. But my problem is not power. My problem is if I give you the power, will you be patient enough? Someone say patient. It takes patience to keep a woman. I say patient, no power. It's a special to understand the woman and keep the woman at home. I told them, I said to understand the man, one book. To understand the woman, encyclopedia. Why? You need patience. Men, you want to marry, are you ready to be patient? To accept all the nonsenses and everything? Are you ready? 
If you are not patient enough, don't pray. The next time they say, Oh God, send me wife. Your prayer is, Oh Lord, give me patience. Give me patience. Give me patience. As a woman, all this your prayer, Jehovah, carry me there, my husband's house. Gee, you will, you, Jehovah will carry you to your husband's house. Impatience will throw you out of the house. Impatience will throw you out. Oh Lord, make me this. How many politicians are impatient? And they will just come and just make, oh my God. Father, take me to the school of patience. Continue to take me to the, that I'll be patient enough with you. I'll be patient with my leaders. I'll be patient with my authority. I'll be patient with those who have your posts above. Do you know sometimes, most of you here, who, when you watch football match, you know, when you watch football, else Chelsea, Arsenal, and all these things, do you know there's a way you'll be inside your house? Those who have sweet mouth are those who are not on the field. Ah, Ronaldo, kick like this. Oh, and your leg will be moving like this. It's because you are not on the field. It is easy to stand on the television and be say, I know what, I know what. You, you are who? Were you on the field? You are not there. So you can be accusing somebody and be insulting them until they carry you like this and put you on the field. And in five minutes, you have run the field and you are tired. In fact, they have to use stretcher to carry you out. Just in five minutes for a, a, um, a match of one hour. Is it one hour? 95 minutes. My brother entered the field. Five minutes, they run here and then he's tired. It is easy for you to query and talk against people because you are not there. Because you are not sitting on that seat, so you don't know the hot seat. You are not the pastor of the church, you don't know how it feels. You are not the head pastor, you are not the assistant senior pastor. You are not the choir master, you are not the head of media. You don't know how it feels. You are not the president of Nigeria. You don't know how it feels. You can be shouting, body, 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 because you are not there. Until you get there, become a governor of Lagos State. In 24 hours, Baba, they will use, they will carry you to UK, London, US, India. They will do all kinds of transplant on you in one day. If you understand patience, you will not, you will not, you will not talk against people you are not supposed to talk against. If you understand, eh, why did this lady act like this? Why do you, you can't talk? The only time you ever talk against somebody is if you are in that position. If you are not in that position, don't ever talk. If you are not in choir, among the choir, don't be in the congregation and be fighting all these choir people. No, sir. If you are not there, if you are not in the media, don't talk against them because it's beyond what the physical eyes can see. There's more to life than what eyes can see. The eyes that sees are few, but the eyes that look, there are many. What your eyes is seeing is beyond what is really there. Somebody say patience. Oh God, help me to be patient. I'm going somewhere. I don't know how time is running against me, but I must draw this point very important. So Adulam is a place of patience. Number three, Adulam is what, what is a place of we are still we are still on process. Someone say process. Is a place of process. That's the number one we pick out of the seven. Process helps you to listen. Process helps you to to really understand honor and appreciate the result of men when you see it. Let me say that again. Process help you to understand what honor. Someone say honor and appreciate result of men. You know, like I said, I use the story of the football. You know, it is very. For instance, as a pastor. Somebody asked me one day, what's your dream? I said, I want to build 500,000 auditorium. It's very easy to say with mouth. Until when we wanted to put this one here, and I was sweating like, like somebody wanted to die. And ordinary canopy, we are here panting. And a man is there building 100,000 seat auditorium, and he's not moved. A man is there building 10,000 seat auditorium, and he's not shaking. In fact, he's doing like as if there's no word. He's running his life, billions upon billions. Is building and life is not you know now coming to this place when we were at the whole church. I used to talk all these pastors have all these pastors they have money coming from UK from US until I got here and I knew there's no money coming from anywhere. Now when I see this man say Pastor Lagbaja is building hundred thousand seat auditorium, I go down my knees. I say, Lord, I honor this grace, I honor this result. You know why? Process has taught me honor. Because God has taken me to PIC will be celebrated. Is it 12 years? I cannot even remember. You know, there's a way you will not be tired of time, you will not be counting time again. More than 12 years this year, I can't remember. Not 12 years of ministry. See where we are. And then you see a ministry in 15 years, they've gone around the whole world. Then you now know how to appreciate them. Honor men. What makes you really understand honor is process. If as a lady, 
if you are not married you are still a single girl you when you see married people who have been married for 10 years you will not honor them it's very easy all these married people you will not honor them until you are married you see men who are married so when somebody comes and say i am married for 15 years the one who is married for five years whose eyes are seen shaggy you will see them they are the ones that will go to the one for 15 and say mommy i honor you ma 15 years ah you try god help you ah you know easy you know all the one who married for one year and after one they broke up you will see they are the ones who be they are the one who is always commenting i'll be wedding anniversary i'll be wedding anniversary i'll be wedding anniversary you know why process has taught them or no so when you see small small girls here yeah, why you see chessy you are sitting your finger like this they say when they say i'll be wedding anniversary say, I'm you it's because you are not married marry no no marry no i say marry i say some of you when they turn your face into punching back the guy punch 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 you you will know when you see married people you will bow down person nobody will teach you honor honor is land in the place of process honor is land can i say that again in the place of process let me mention one or two more then i i will talk about the final story ah this this one will shake it will change your life forever when you when you when you are in the school of process in in the university in the university of adulam it creates memories somebody say memories and experiences that will help you <laughs> sorry process helps you to create memory and experiences that will help you sustain your success now let me say this do you know sometimes when i'm talking to people young pastors come to me maybe pastor john in Port Accord, ah, Papa, we are trying to buy speaker there's no money and i said eight years ago when we were in the old church someone said memory if you didn't go through memory processes you will not have a memory and because you don't have a memory you'll be deleted from the memory of life because there's no memories memories and stories papa have you how many of you what you are going through now what you are going to and you are calling battle is actually a memory for the future somebody will have the same experience and come to you and say i'm going through this problem you say i remember when i was here and there and there and there now the purpose of those memories is not for you to talk about you know there's some people you tell your problem and they will share memories which i say is it memory i go jump no the purpose of those memories now listen the purpose of those memories is that anytime you want to misbehave are you following me well you know maybe you're a man that god has helped you you know before you used to drink and it's about finished you now god is bringing job you have money you are blessed at least you, you have a car you are not using the car to be you know diverting up and down enjoying life and you think that I, i'm enjoying the memory will come one day say remember five years ago you were inside the house you were drinking gari kuli kuli and epa. there was no helper remember there was a time in picc when there was no sound there was no keyboard there was no microphone and do you know sometimes like that even when there's nothing to thank god about one day i'll just lie down and while i'm praying there's nothing to thank about the least we say remember remember this time is when your water used to come and disturb you and when we are doing service your water will climb the altar and will carry all our chair and relocate it to another location to go and do something remember remember that you cannot have service without somebody spraying them um, gas and all this is only say remember remember how you used to fight anytime i remember that i go back on my knees and say lord i thank you not only to purpose of thanks but also to sustain the success that god has given to me that that i will never misbehave that i will never misbehave someone say why pastor Elisha? see the eternity the grace of god will keep me standing you know why i've passed through a lot of pains i've passed through a lot of frustrations i've passed through a lot of battles in my life and every time and i will not be ungrateful that i will forget these things that god brought me from if suddenly god does do you know if suddenly maybe a man has to labor for this work and they just carried me from somewhere and they put me here as a pastor do you know it is very easy for me to mess up because i met success on ground i met breakthrough on ground and because i met breakthrough i cannot sustain it that's what makes men misbehave but men who had gone through process who struggled who was i'm sure those who were with us from the beginning those who know this story from old church that is why sometimes you look at some of those people and they are they'll be laughing at you say this one just came in less than one hour is it gra, gra, gra. He said, do you know what you went through do you know what the pains you went through this man do you know what he's teaching them he's teaching them the law of memories that sustains the success that 
God has given to you. Hallelujah. Finally, and then we we now look that quickly. Give me um first Samuel, second Samuel chapter twenty three. Now this one is going to be a long reading. I want to round up now. I want to round up. The final thing process teach you is that process teach you. It gives you the ability and your understanding that what you have been through is also a testimony to lift others. So sometimes when somebody come to you and say, Pastor, I am broke, I am down, I am frustrated, you will say, there was a time in my life that was broken down and downcasted, but I stood with God and he raised me. The same God that actually helped me, he will help you. It's a testimony for the lifting of others. It's a testimony for the rising of others. I remember when a giant, the rest will be with me, you know, Joel Legba, who will go and buy into me, need to, who buy credits. There's no money. When I come back from mountain, they will have eaten based on my neck. And I'm not the one that had the end of me. It's the people living in my house and they'll be accumulating debt on my head. Accumulating debt. When I come, I'm the one, the woman will come and hold. And I didn't even have money because there's no money anywhere. And one day I said, Lord, this story must change. This season, this season must pass by. So sometimes when somebody says, Pastor, I'm in debt. Most of you used to think people who God has helped that they've never seen problem before. They have. I have worked for Pure Water Factory. I have worked for, I have worked in all kinds of places. I have worked any, anywhere you want to talk about. I've trekked till my slippers pull off. I'm not saying all this because it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a means by which your life can be raised. That, they say, that there's a God in Israel that can raise a man from nothing to something as long as you continue to practice the process of making now some of you you don't want to complete the circle of your making you are in the university of making process you are in the faculty of processing you have not completed your process you dapper if you run away you run away without your processing being completed there will be a deficiency truly you can be enthroned but you can be a proud king truly you can be enthroned Power can enthrone you, but character will dethrone you. Yeah. Knowledge can elevate you, but impatience will dethrone you. Um, um, favor, grace, and mercy can shift you to men of power and honor, and they can change your life all of a sudden. But listen, character deficiency can drag you back to the poor, to the ground. You know why? You did not complete the process of making in the university of Adulam. Am I speaking to somebody? You didn't complete it. That is why you can look at somebody and say, this guy is highly anointed. He's highly anointed. But as he finished on the altar, he's already frustrated, fighting everybody. You say, it's not that God is not using him. It's just that the guy did not finish the process of making. Somebody will be eating granite, gulu, gulu, yow, 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 yow. In two minutes, the guy is going to climb on the altar. But the guy is eating granite, eating gulu, gulu, yow, everything on his mouth. He is even messy, scattering everywhere. And in two minutes, he will climb on the altar and he will lift up his hand will flow anointing will flow the gift that the calling of god is without repentance when god give it to you he give it to you but there'll be a deficiency in your life that you did not complete the process it's like somebody that went to school primary one you did not jump you finish jump primary two enter primary three jump primary three enter primary four jump primary four enter primary five and you enter from primary five you enter into gss one from gss one they carry you to ss one what do you think would be the life of that person there'll be a deficiency the deficiency in your life is not the punch out. It's not the devil that punch out it. It's a sign that you did not finish the school of processing. And the only way men can do it is to drag you back to Adolam to come and finish it. Because if you don't finish it, it will always be there. Anywhere, go abroad. Anywhere, go to any part of the world. Let God lift you and, and change your story. If that processing is not complete, it will be a deficiency. That's why God can bring you to a man. God brought you to Pastor Elisha. The pastor Elisha should mentor you, tutor you, train you. But you felt that he's so hard, he's so aggressive. A man can be your process. A system can be your process. You can come to me and I can be the one that God will help you. I can be shouting at you, screaming at you, and say, I don't like him. He's so harsh, he's so harsh. The, what will make you is that harshness. What will build you is that harshness. Because God is not making a coward out of you. He's making a giant killer. And if you are going to be a giant killer, you must complete all the processing of making. Because men that stand before giant are also giant in themselves. Only giant can slay a giant. And if you are not made to be a giant, you become a coward in the battle of life. And you'll be defeated and become a casualty. Am I speaking to somebody? Am I speaking to somebody? You are in choir. Don't jump away. 
if God is lifting you, complete your process. Complete what? Complete your process. Sometimes we pick one of you and we pr promote you, post you on po pictures and post you on posters and you know display you across the whole world. It's not me mean that you have made it. We're only trying to expose you to the world and to also return you back to Adulam that you must complete your process. Adulam, we are men are processed. Tell me the end product of gold. Tell me the end product of brass and silver. Tell me the end product. Listen, I am a man possessed by God. I have been possessed by time. I've been possessed by season. I've been possessed by everything around. I've been possessed by, 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 by poverty. I've been possessed by prosperity. And that is why you look at me. You are celebrating the end product of Pastor Elisha. One of the people God used to process me is my wife. Celebrate Jesus. Yes! I'm, I'm glad to say it. She's one of those God used to process me to be. So you are celebrating Pastor Elisha? No. My life 10, 12 years ago was a life, a bag of rubbish. But I'm a man processed by God in the University of Adelaide. Let's go now. Now we want to round up the sermon. I think I think I will just jump the other time. I'll just round up the sermon. Now, I want to show you first Psalm, second Psalm 23. But then please, we're going to read very well. Now listen. Remember these men that we talked about their names who 400 who came to David they had no name remember I'm not you following lift up your hands lift up did they have name they were miscreant they were agbero they were misfits they were prostitute they were all blessed men now let's see what happened let's see what happened to them if you have your Bible let's read together second summer 23 and now look at what began to happen to them we're going to read it and I will show you and where and then we'll begin to round up. Are you ready? Somebody, are you ready? Yes, sir. See what happened to this man. Brother Dave, let's read together. 23. I think I'll be reading from here too. Now, David, the Bible says in verse 1, this, this was the last verse of David, the son of Jesse, the man that was raised on high, uh, and the anointed of God, the sweet psalmist, and all that. The spirit of the Lord said to me, now, 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 listen. In, in verse let's go straight to verse 8 someone say 8 look up look up this is where i want to shock you in verse 8 so all these men that came to david that were miscreant that were a nobody that were non-entity that were poor broke hopeless and who were frustrated now david wanted to give an account the bible want to give account of them may your name be also be accounted like this May your name be enlisted among men. When the hand of PICC is being mentioned, after PICC had conquered the world, and I sit down to talk, and I want to mention men that God has raised from PICC, may your name be like the name I want to mention here. It will not be said of you that hey, there was somebody, hey, we cannot find him again. That will not be your story. Now listen, in verse 9, look up, everybody, can we read it together? And in verse 8, verse 8, this be the names of the mighty men whom David had the Tacomite that sat in the sea, chief among the captain. The same was Adino. Someone say Adino. God is raising men like Adino. Adino, the Azanites, he lifted up his spear against 800 whom he slew at once. A man slew 800 men at once. Adino. Someone say Adino. This guy said, Pastor, sit down. I will win 800 souls to this church. Sit down, Pastor. The mighty man, the boy said, Adino, he slew 800. A man to slay 800 men at once. There was something upon him. It means the spirit inside David had transferred upon his life. And the Bible recorded his name and said his name is Adino, the Azarite. Go to verse 9. But David, let's go. Let's just stand up. Stand up. Let's read fast. Stand up. Let's read fast because of time. Because I need to, this way I need to explain. And after him was Eliza. After him was Eliza. Eliza. Go ahead. The son of Dodo. The son of Dodo. The Howite. The Howite. One of the three mighty men with David. One of the three mighty men of David. When they defied the Philistines. They defied the Philistines. And when they gathered together in battle. Uh -huh. And the men of Israel were gone away. Okay. He arose he and arose. smote the Philistines. Hi, listen. They went to battle. And the, the whole Israelites ran. They went away and this guy's name is Eliezer. He said, No, one man 
stood and faced the whole Philistine army and he defied them. One man! One man! The Bible regards his name as Eliezer. Another name. Among those who miscried, Abero, are you here this morning? Your friend call you Abero. Your family call you Abero. You feel to be miscried. You feel to be dejected. Listen, there's an Eliezer coming out of you. There's an Adino coming out of you. Men that will stand and shake the nations. Men that will stand and shake the cities. Men that will defile the armies of Israel. The Bible says Eliezer. Let's go on. The third one was Shama. I love Shama. I love Shama. Go to the next one. And after him was Shama. After you know, David is listing the mighty men. Do you know a time will come during convention? PICC at 30. I will come one day and I will say there was a time a man named Pastor Adedeji Adeshino, one man single handedly conquered cities. And I will talk and I will say, Oh, there's a man called Pastor John Amanam. He went to Portacot and defied the whole armies of Philistine and he shook Portacot. Branch one, branch two, branch three, branch four, branch five, branch six. The whole of Portacot had been conquered for Jesus. And I will pick Bright. I say, Here is Bright. Bright is here in Abuja. Look at him. He's a man. Bright the son of what's your father's name nobody even know the bride of the son of nobody he entered into the city of united states of america and he conquered that city that will be tough and then we're going to pick a woman we're going to say there's a woman who came to pcc who entered into a place called adulam her name is damilola damilola came and damilola went into Italy and Damlola wrote wonders and Damlola shook that city and Damlola conquered men and then when we finish we we'll pick Elizabeth Elizabeth we say there is Elizabeth one of the mighty men who came to Elisha the name is Elizabeth and this Elizabeth alone singularly conquered a thousand women she won them and saved their soul she transformed their life this will be the encounter of story that will be said concerning you it will not be said that uh, there was this person who sat down in church, the bench woman. Ten years, bench woman. Five years, bench woman. What are you achieving? What are we going to say about you? Let's move on. It's a long reading. Look at what Shama did. I want to round up now. I want to round up. Shama. The son of Haji, the Hararite. Shama, the son of Haji, the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop. troop. Where we, was the peace? peace? Go ahead, read from the book. Shama. Where was a piece of ground full of lentils? And the people fled from Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. And three of the thirty chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave, cave of, Adul of Adulam. And the, and the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley in verse 14. And David was there in a hole. Now, in the garrison of the Philistines was, was in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that I will give me water from the well of belly on the belly of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. David was thirsty. He said, I need water. He said, I need water. And listen, verse 16. And these three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines. They risked their life for a man. They risked their life. For who? For a man. I did told you that. Don't kill yourself because of pastor. Don't kill yourself because of church. People have told you, I mean, you will die because of church. Yeah. These three men, they broke through the Philistines. Look at what they did. Because of water. Somebody won't drink water. And they broke through. The, it's like I said, somebody wants to drink water. And then you go. The president of Ukraine wants to drink water. And they enter Russia to give them water. And then look forward again. And the Bible begins to describe Abisha in verse 18. The brother of Job. The son of Azurite was chief among them. He lifted up his spear against 300 and slew them. And he, he had the name among the three. May your name be lifted. I said, may your name be lifted. Was he not most honorable? Therefore, he was a captain. How be that? In verse 20. Now, let me hand up here. Let me hand up. 20. Look at 20. I love this Bernard. May God raise men like Bernard. I said, may God, God is raising Benaiah from PICC. And Benaiah, the son of Juada, the son of a valiant man of Kaja, who had done many arts. God will use you to do many arts. He slew two iron like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of the pit, pit in the time of snow. For a man to attack iron, lion in slow. Slow time is slippery. You don't fight. Should be a Samson that killed lion. This guy, Beniad, killed the lion. He killed lion like men and destroyed them in time of slow. May your name be enlisted. I am not, my prayer point is, oh Lord, use me. It's not my prayer, it's not God, use me again. I prayed that prayer 15 years ago. 
My prayer point is, is not, Lord, raise men like me. God has raised men like me. My prayer point is that the men that you have raised like me, may they raise others. That's not my prayer point. So if after five years, oh Lord, use me, use me, you still come back and say, use me, that means something is wrong with you. Because God doesn't use men twice. When he enlists them, he enlists them forever. It is either you decide to not to complete the process of making or you humble yourself and return back. Listen, it takes humility for you to return back to say, I know I didn't complete my process. I may be speaking to someone this morning who knows that you have disorganized yourself from the process. You can return back and say, Lord, ah, I have heard now that there's a process of making. I didn't complete my process. I did complete the process of making number of God. I want to complete my process because I know that you're going to make me a giant killer. This is how giants were raised. Men who slew giants were men who passed through process. Close your eyes. Seven dimension of Adulam. We are picking the last because it's the most important process. Lord, as I round up the service, please help me. To complete the process that you are making me through. Your mother is aggressive. It's a process. Your father is harsh. It's a process. Your school teacher is on your neck. Every time. Have you done your work? And you are running away from him. It's a process. Your mentor. That's your mentor. That is tutoring you. And you are running away. It's a process. You must complete it. Because if you don't complete it. It will show on you. That you never completed. When I see people. Who make mistake i know i cry i said this guy did not finish this lady did not finish processes of making close your eyes we want to pray father we will pray more on tuesday and on wednesday make sure you are in church on tuesday and wednesday let's complete the process with prayer time will not permit us we will have prayed just rise up one minute rise up one minute quickly just rise up lord lord one minute help me to complete the process that you are taking me through you have no home is a process so that you appreciate and value those who don't have home when god give you an estate you have no car you are rocking don't worry you will have trips of cars then you will know when men are trekking you can appreciate it lift your hands lord help me to complete the process who you are using to process me help me to complete it help me not to come out or disregard the process lift your hands and pray quickly one minute thank you father blessed be the name in jesus mighty name we pray let's be seated please go back home and continue to pray let's pray on our tight all tight us here if you have your tight please let's pray on it let's pray on our tight quickly all tight us let's come out thank you jesus tight us please let's be out thank you let's be out tight us Titus, let's come out. I will not. Shilabatos, Caprato, Caprataya. 